Good evening. Uh, welcome to the May 1st regular meeting of the Board of Library Trustees. Uh, we are going to be starting off with, um, as we always do, public participation and seeing no one in the audience, we will move quickly to correspondence, of which there is none. Uh, the approval of the minutes from the February 1st meeting. We all had a chance to take a look at that. That was short. Any edits, corrections? None? Uh -huh. Okay. Let me just. Uh, Thank you. On trustees update, Mark volunteered to represent the trustees. Yes. Okay. So we need to insert no, represent. Just, no, just get rid of. Oh, these volunteered. Selectmen. Yes. C cross out the selectmen too. Yeah. Or to the selectmen. Mm -hmm. Okay. So apart from that edit. I'm a Ms. Carruth. Uh, we're. No. We, and we don't have a recording secretary tonight. Uh, we do. I'm taking. I'm oh. taking. All right. So they won't be as good as I expect. And. Uh, okay. So apart apart from that, all set. Okay. Go ahead. I make a motion that to, to accept the meeting minutes as, as edited. As edited, the meeting minutes of February first. Second. All in favor. Aye. 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 Excellent. Well, All right. Who seconded? Was that David? <coughs> that was David. Mark snuck in. Uh, David, do you have a treasurer's <coughs> report for us? Okay. Um, everybody got your Bartholomew reports. <laughs> That is the January, ending, ending in January 1. Okay, we have not received to February. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is the most current that I have right now that was just given to me by uh, Steve Venuti. Okay. Uh, the day before yesterday. And yesterday uh, he sent me <coughs> our uh, MMDT balances. Mm -hmm. uh, the building fund is 391000 Two hundred eighty-one dollars and sixty-four cents, mm -hmm. and the MMDT operating mm -hmm. balance is negative two fifty-one sixty-five, which appears to be the same as it was last month, and I don't know why it hasn't changed yet. Yeah, so um, <laughs> Sam can get you up to date on that, though. <laughs> um, so that's actually one of the points later. Do you want to talk about it now, or let's that? talk about it right now? All right, all right. So I contacted. Bonnie was sick, so that's why it took so long to get anything from her. Um, so I, I told her about, we went through something similar like this last year, and so I asked her why is it happened, because she, she transferred the money last year without a problem. So apparently last year the, the funds she transferred were actually gift funds. They were just being held in the trust. So that's why she was able to transfer the money. Mm -hmm. But this year there aren't those gift funds. So they're actual trust funds. So, um, and that needs to be transferred, according to them, at town meeting. So I spoke to someone at the Department of Finance, a lawyer there, he said, no, you can trust this trustee money, you can tr transfer it when you want. So she said, came back to me and said that she's gonna talk to a lawyer at the Department of Revenue, but that she needs some sort of evidence of what these trust funds were meant for. But these trust funds were created some of them more than 20, 30, 40 years ago. So we don't have any evidence. I've looked through the office, I can't find anything. Um, so I'm still working on with her on that. Um, as you guys know, the money for the shelving that starts on Monday <laughs> was supposed to come from MMDT, but we do have money in state. Um, that was another thing, the money was not in, in our account. Turns out when the money came, they deposited it in somebody else's account. So we had to track that down. <laughs> so it's now in our account. 
Um, money from the state? Yeah, the state aid that we get every year. Oh. And how much money was that? 6000 and change. Um, so I wonder where that went. So um, we can, I've spoken to the state aid people, and they said that's no problem, that we can use the money for that, okay. for the shelving. So we'll use that, and then I'll still work with Bonnie and figure out this MMT thing. Okay. Okay. Thank um, you. If you need me to help you with Bonnie, let me know, because okay. I did all the research. Yeah, no, I found all the, all the minutes and all that stuff where you, the memorandum of understanding, I sent her that between one of the old uh, treasurers. Um, Will you say there's no evidence <laughs> that of any of these funds? Um, so I found I think I think I sent that to Bonnie, but because we went through this, we went through this with Steve a few years ago, and we this has been going on ongoing for a couple of months now. I thought it was squared away by now. Well, apparently not. Apparently not. Okay. Yeah. It will get squared away. Yeah. One way or another. <laughs> we we jumped through these hoops before and it got squared away. So. Okay. This is hoop jumping. So that's the treasury report to the extent that I have information to give. Thank you, David. With respect to the friends report, I can tell you that um, there are 12 new family units in the last month, of which um, apparently there are 16 voting members. So I, th I think that if you consider those people partnered, there are actually eight families <clears throat> and then four maybe individuals or something um, <clears throat> do the math on that they um, told us that from the Facebook like giving Tuesday that they're um, it's like twenty three hundred dollars that they'll be transferring over to, to to us as building fund related um, they mentioned that the children's room will be closed uh, from March 5th to the 9th. Um, let's see. Tickets for the mini golf fundraiser are available on Eventbrite. Uh, and um, that is the 23rd in the evening. And it's going to be um, mini golfing inside the library where, um, you know, you go through and use a club and tiny balls and <laughs> hit them into, you know, just like mini golf outside, but in the library. And it'll end up downstairs in the cooper room where um, lots of different local restaurants have um, donated food and there's going to be a silent raffle and I think, a, what's the other kind? Silent auction. Oh, silent auction. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe it's a silent there's auction two. and a raffle. There is. is that right? Both. Yes. Yeah, okay. All right. Is the food truck thing going to still happen? That's what The I'm next saying. day oh, okay. for kids and Maybe families, they're going to leave the mini golf set up. And uh, I think it's $5. Play all you want all day long. Um, but there's going to be, what is it called? It's got like a bad, like a tough guy name to it. Yeah, something like mob related. Is yeah. That? What is it like? It's a taco truck. It's basically. a taco truck, but it's got a really yeah. clever name. I can't, I can't remember, remember what it is. Um, which is terrible advertising for them, but it's clever. Um, I think that pretty much sums up what we talked about. They will be um, in possession of credit card swipers, so people don't have to be concerned about going to the ATM beforehand. Um, so that's nice to have that. And of the 18 holes, as of the 21st, they had sold 16 of 18 to sponsors. So it's really, it's really coming along. Nice. So encourage people to go to the mini golf fundraiser. If anyone's watching, would like to sponsor two of the last remaining holes. Uh, I, I, I believe, believe the holes are all sponsored they all, now. They, um, they are still waiting. Great. I'm Great. not sure they have a title sponsor yet. On Monday at the fundraising committee, they had not had those last two sold yet, so that's great. Beautiful. Thanks, Mark. All right. Can so I just clarify something? Yeah. Our older teens uh, for Friday, are our older teens welcome that at that event? I believe so. I that's think I so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think so. I asked that question on Monday night. Yeah. I was told yes. Oh, okay. So that pretty much sums up the, the friends um, from their meeting on the 21st. Fundraising committee report. 
I hope I, I just I have nothing new. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Good no, Mark. I was the same. No, you did. <laughs> you, no, Mark was the one. Mark, yeah. Never mind. Could I, could I ask what kind of advertising is getting done uh, for the mini golf? Do we know? Yes. So um, at the moment, I believe the majority of the advertising is e uh, being done through Facebook. Uh, every whole sponsor is being recognized um, publicly uh, at multiple times. Um, there's also been advertising in the Action Unlimited, and I believe there's going to be some advertising in the Independent mm -hmm. and also the Wool Sun. Okay. How about um, how about the the little board we have down there in the in the at the desk? Oh yeah. In the back. It's up uh, there. Okay. I would yeah. think so. Yeah. yeah. And in yeah. fact, there's one a printed poster on on the circulation desk okay. on the left there yeah i believe they're Lots of looking posters. to put signs at the common and shaker lane they're and also yes exactly that's going to be asking this is the sandwich board style yeah and we we did not luck out on the electronic sign that that's nixed by the town um, i did let i let them know apparently there were issues with with too many people wanting to use it oh so they they set a policy that nobody uses it and it's just used for safety issues and uh Announcements oh, of a sign. town meeting and whatnot, so we couldn't get the sign. Okay. Electronic billboard. Electronic billboard. Yeah. Okay. Well, all right then. So that covers the fundraising committee report yeah. as well. Okay. Uh, trustee updates. Anything to update us on, Mr. Rombacher? Uh, no, not really. No. Okay, David. I'm all set. Okay. Katie, any trustee updates? No. No? Okay. Um, we're happy that Sam's back from his international travel. We missed you Thank when you. you were gone. Um, so I thought about Sam in Australia while he was gone. That's my update. <laughs> All right. Moving on to our director. Right. What do you have to share with us, Sam? Um, so it's pretty short since so I was out half a month. <laughs> uh, I met with uh, Rowan Lauren from MBLC prior to our meeting, uh, our other meeting. And they informed me what I can expect moving forward with the project. Um, basically, they're going to become my new best friends for the next seven years, <laughs> <laughs> even after the library is built. Um, uh, yeah, and um, they just said that you know they'll always be there to support me. They'll keep me in the loop. If other people contact them about something, they always contact me. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, I was recently asked by M MVLC to serve on the executive committee mm. for fiscal year 19. So nice. I accepted. So um, tell me, well, oh, what's that I don't about? I get that right. Okay. Executive committee. Committee. Yeah, MVLC. So MVLC is our consortium. Oh, it's on here. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I keep just. Uh, MVLC is the consortium that we're a part of with uh, 35 other libraries, and the executive committee basically makes. Um, they're like the trustees. They they make decisions on budget. They are the boss for the director of MVLC. Um, Congratulations. That's great. Um, and then the eighth annual bread bake off was held on February tenth. Forty people attended. Forty? Yeah. Yeah, a bunch of people showed up after you left. <laughs> well, like there. Yeah. She didn't eat all the bread. We can go in, it's safe. Yeah. Uh, so we had like forty we had forty people attend and um, the what? winners. Uh, Sarah Womp Rombacher. Uh, every year Sarah wins. She makes good bread. Um, yeah, she makes good bread. Um, I honestly don't remember the other three people, so. Three, three winners. Yeah, so there were two first prize and two second prize. Okay. Yeah. Linda Lord won as well. Yeah, what Linda Lord won. What was hers? The pear bread. Oh, that was good. Yeah. Mm, that was good. Yeah. And the, the, um, cheese, no, not the cheese, the, um. The chocolate one win? No. Ooh. No. That's an upset. <laughs> It was the cheesy one, right? Yes. I don't, I don't remember who made that. There's someone new that had never done it before. And it's my first. Yeah. All right. Excellent. Okay. Um, we're doing pretty well spending for the budget um, on books. Um, we're chugging along. And uh, salary's doing pretty well, too. And then the rest is the stats. Okay. Mm. Do we have any update on how our budget's looking for next year? If they're going to... No, they haven't told me that. Okay. Thanks, Sam. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
Right. Um, old business. Can um, you, uh, hold on. Hold, hold, um, sorry. Before, maybe I missed when you started, but is there? Do you want to say what the plan is for the children's room next week? Sure. So um, uh, Diane is going to start moving. She's already cleared off the tops of all the the shelving. Uh, we're going to close it next week. Um, she's canceled story time. Um, for the next week because she just doesn't think there's going to be mm -hmm. space for it. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to have to put the bins in the Cooper room um, because um, basically I didn't know if we were going to have money, <laughs> so I didn't order a pod mm -hmm. So until recently. So um, we're going to have to put it there. Plus the book mover person told me that it would cost extra to put it in the pod because she only quoted me to put it inside the building. Uh. So apparently going outside the building costs more. <laughs> so again, I didn't know if we were going to have oh, money. That's so, fine, that's fine. Yeah, so anyway, uh, Diane is going to create a small little thing downstairs in the Cooper room and maybe spread out to the other parts of the library if she needs to. Yeah. And then it's all for a week. So yeah, yeah, yeah. we've advertised it, we've put it on the website that we're closing it. Right. Um, the only thing we're worried about is people coming up in the elevator because the worker is going to need the elevator. So we don't want to. Um, anyone going up there because staff won't be allowed up there. There's insurance and liability issues. So we're going to have to create some kind of giant sign in the elevators to, right. to well, parents. Can you put it right over the button that says do not press? Well, the three. workers have to use it. The workers have to go. Well, um, you whisper to them and say, that doesn't apply to you. <laughs> well, yeah, I could do that. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we're going to figure out something. Yeah. But, um, yeah, so that's the plan. It's so, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yes. Great. Uh, an update from MBLC. Um, oh, that was about our meeting, basically. Oh, okay. Um, you did it. You already did it. I already did it. <laughs> You're flying through children's... Okay, new business. Okay. Children's room internship in confidentiality agreement. Okay, so... Um, Diana has been approached by a student at Simmons. Yeah. Um, she would like to, she's a patron, she uses the library a lot, she's a mom. Um, she would like to do an internship in the children's room um, during the summer um, from, let's see, from June 18th to August 3rd. It would be non-paid internship. Um, I don't have a problem with it, um, but Diane wants her to do a little more than a volunteer would do, and so she would have access to the computer. And so that means patron information is on there. So um, I found this confidentiality agreement on uh, that other libraries use, and it kind of borders on the being a policy. <laughs> so that's why I'm bringing it yeah. to you guys. So just it's a simple little thing that says you know she won't look up patron information. She won't share with other people. Right. Um, you know there are legal consequences for doing that. Right. That's sort of thing. So if my son wants to take out Harry Potter, she right. can't tell someone, right. oh, right. Abram was just here taking right. out Harry like Potter. Just like the staff can't just do like that. Yeah. 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 So. Would you do like a Corey instead? Yeah, she also has to get okay. Corey. So mm -hmm. I've given her the form and I've informed um, Ann Esmond, our HR. Yeah. So an unpaid internship for what looks like nine or ten weeks. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much every library student has to do it. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, so yeah. she chose us. And Diane is really. She lives in town. She yeah. uses the library. Okay. So, are you concerned that that rather is this brought to our attention because we need to say we're fine with right. the language of this? Right. Do you know what um, library this came from? A Mass Library, of Massachusetts. Um, I believe so. Yes. Okay. I mean, it it seems to me on reading through it that it is just very clear about you know. What happens in the library stays in the library, and there are certain instances where that might not apply, like subpoenas or you know if there's some other something. But it wouldn't be her; she wouldn't have the um, entitlement to make a decision about that on her own. She would she would turn it over to the staff. Yeah, yeah, to you and or Diane or both. Um, yeah, I, I think this, to, to my eyes, this reads as being reasonable and fair and clear. Mm -hmm. So um, I don't know if you want a motion that we would accept it as the internship confidentiality agreement. I have a couple questions. Sure. Um, 
Is there a reason why we want it just specifically for internships versus any other employee? Because don't, I mean, the rules all are all the same, right? So it it wouldn't apply to volunteers because they don't use the computers. Um, and then staff, they, it's, I think it's sort of assumed. I don't, I don't know, like why. I had to sign a, a contract that kind of says this, and there's, you know, bylaws that say it. So. I think that's why the internship was kind of a weird mm, middle she's area. She's not really an employee. Right, she's not right. an employee, but she's also not a volunteer. She's doing more than a volunteer does. Yeah. So. Okay. Um, and, the, and I was wondering if there needs to be any information about what she's allowed to share with about patrons with other staff or communication between, between interns and staff about patrons. Does that make sense? I mean, if Abram went up and said, I can't find Harry Potter, that she would turn to Diane and say, can you help Abram find Harry Potter? No, I mean, we're saying they're, who they're allowed. It's So there's all this talk about what you're allowed to divulge and what you're not, but there's also just backroom chatter type things that also apply, right? And I don't know if that needs to be called out a little more that you can't be, you shouldn't be talking about patrons and their habits amongst the staff or with the staff, right? Okay. It's it's the same So no gossip. <laughs> well, it's it's <laughs> you're not you're you're not you're not allowed to dis just like you're not allowed to dis divulge this publicly, you when you're talking to other staff, it's still public, right? It's I just don't know if that needs to be called out a little more sp specifically. Does that make sense? Yeah, I understand what you're saying. I just, I've never seen that. I looked at a lot of these and I didn't see anything like that in there. So, I mean, we could add something like that if you, you guys have any ideas of what the wording for that would be. Yeah. I, guess I'm I, don't, I don't know that any of our, any of the people who work downstairs are held to, held to that. It's maybe just by word of mouth that they don't speak about that. I don't think there's any kind of literature, uh, there's nothing written that's yeah, even for policy. the people who work here. So I don't know why I want to start with this one. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's a good point. I mean, and I mean it's just, it's just, it would just be to me a, a common sense thing. Yeah. You know. And I have only heard people say things like, a patron was looking for this, right. not, you know, yes. Miss Aslan was looking for this, you know, a patron. Yeah, I found them incredibly discreet, actually. Yeah. <laughs> Not bad to have a code of conduct for an intern, but the code of conduct, sh conduct should probably be for all of them. So, you know, to that end, maybe you want to have one later on, but tonight's not the night to start that. Okay. All right. All right, so I move that we approve Sam's internship confidentiality agreement for the summer for the student from Simmons. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. And we should change it to Sam's internship <laughs> confidentiality <laughs> agreement. I just put it in there so it's really Sam's, clear. It's Sam's internship. <laughs> Sam's intern. So this probably needs posted as one of our policies and data groups. Okay. Um, Coming on to the next item of new business discussion, a visit from Patrick McSweeney at every library. I believe that's your talking point, Katie. Yes, I had a, I've had a couple delightful conversations with Patrick. It's actually Sweeney. I made a mistake. It's not McSweeney. He is the director of every library, and uh, they um, support libraries going through the building process. And I spoke to him about getting support for our staff. He's willing to come here. Um, his time is free. And he will talk to our staff about how um, their role going through the process, you know, um, as well, well as other folks involved, how to legally talk about this project without breaking any laws, um, how to um, help the community understand, uh, you know, the value of this. Um, 
So anyway, Patrick would love to come here. He is in Brooklyn, and he's willing to drive here. So um, we we would be uh, asked to pay his expenses. Yes, yes. His his car, his gas, gas, and then accommodation. Yep. And, and he would do maybe a three or four hour. Um, I mean, he'd spend as much time as, as we wanted okay. um, once he's here. Okay. He said, ideally, um, three or four hours is good for a presentation. Mm -hmm. um, and so that would have to be coordinated with you on what works for the staff. And um, I don't know about, I think that some of them are, are clearly eager to get some more support yeah. in this area. So I don't know how it all works with, you know, their time and stuff like that. I don't even want to get into that right now. Mm -hmm. But um, I am proposing that, uh, so what we would need to do is pay for his gas and his um, place to stay and, you know, expenses. Um, and it's 440 miles. It wouldn't be more than like 250 for the gas or whatever and a night's stay so unless somebody wanted to put them up you know um, but so I don't have a problem with them but we don't have money in uh, DT so <laughs> how would we uh... I don't I'm not I'm new so I don't know how the whole money thing would work and I don't know where the money would come from so since it's related to the building we could take it out of the building the project okay. <clears throat> yeah I could always set up a staff meeting group. I have no problem with that. Do you know when he would want to do it? Well, I think the next thing he wants to do is talk with you because okay. um, uh, he wants you, know, you and him to everybody be on the same page and okay. see what you, you know best about the timing and when sure. we work. Yeah. Um, um, do you want to give him my info or give me... I'll, I'll give you, yeah. Okay. And it's it's easy to contact him because he's got this whole system where you enter. <laughs> oh, it's true. I, I had a long conversation with him on the phone as well. And you can access his calendar and you can shop around for okay. wanting to have a coordinated meeting with him. You plug your number and he right. calls you. It was, it was pretty cool. He's in Brooklyn. He's a very cool guy. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Um, so, all right. <laughs> yeah, he's super nice. I'll send you his information then. Okay. And. Um, you know, I was trying to ballpark how much we should think of. You're saying it's 400 miles there and 400 miles back. No, it's no, it's Round not. It's trip. 220. Okay. So it's 20 dollars worth of gas right there. 212. Okay. So it's a well, back. what's the so what's three, the reimbursement rate these days? 5545 is IRS. Yeah. Oh, what? It is. Yeah. I thought it was 0. 0.53. Um, I okay. well, the, so the, the state the just went up to 545. Oh. So yeah, I think that's down. the I think that's the right. 545. Yeah. yeah. So 545 times 440 is what? Yeah, I'm trying to find my cut. So it's I know like it's two something. 220. Which is like 220 dollars times yeah. 0. 0.545. Yeah. 212 to New York City. 239.80. To drive to Brooklyn and back. Gas. Yeah. I'll go pick him up for half that. <laughs> okay. So there's that, and then so maybe 130 bucks. for a hotel. But I was thinking just ballpark, 500 bucks, and then. No more than 500. Right. I mean, right. just right. to be safe. And right. then we, you know, he stops and gets a cup of coffee. Because my couch is free. He gets a cup of coffee, stay, right? and we can pay for it, you know. All right. And then we won't exceed, and there's probably going to be money left over. And he can stay at your house, maybe. Okay. Do so you have staff meetings planned, or money in the budget for more staff meetings? Yeah, we um, we do them every couple of months. So if we do it in like another, we just had one January. like the last month. Yeah, yeah. January. Four hundred and ten oh. miles round trip. Four ten. Um, he thought it would be good Thanks, to get <laughs> this going ASAP, okay. and I I kind of agree with him, but I'll let you you guys chat. Okay. And wait, ideally, it would be on a Sunday when nobody's going to uh, We usually do it because Sundays we have to pay the staff over time. Because that's the part I have to figure yeah. I don't know how we figure that out or how. You do it during, like, normally yeah. you do a we'll staff do it meeting. On Tuesday or Thursday morning before we open it. Okay. It's the kind of thing that as much of us should be there as well of course, of because course. there's so much benefit. Right. Because this guy is like. He knows his stuff. Right, right. Okay. All right. Well, we'll figure it out. 
Okay. So the next step then is for you to connect with Patrick. Yeah. And you're going to connect them. Yeah. We and vote. You're going to connect yourself with his magic scheduler. Okay. All right. Terrific. Thank you, Katie. Uh, oh, new. So, no, we should vote oh, to approve to, to, yeah, to oh, the money. Okay. Spend so, not more than five hundred. Make a well, make a motion, sister. Make a motion that we. I've never made a motion. Vote to uh, approve uh, to allocate no more than five hundred dollars uh, to cover the travel expenses of Patrick Sweeney round trip from Brooklyn. Well done for the first time. Second. Okay. All in favor. Did somebody second? Yes. I do. Okay. Aye. 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 Sure. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. All right. Uh, next item is the new Littleton Reads program. Can we do it? Um, yeah, I'll have to look into uh, what book to do. Um, yeah. In in past in past years. Um, we had, the first time we did it, we read Omnivore's, I was going to say Delight. It's not Delight, it's Dilemma. Um, <laughs> and there was, uh, there were all the adult books, but there was also a teen version and a kid's version. And oh, it was, it was really, um, platform-wise, it was really accessible to everyone. It was great. Um, then we had another one a year the, later, which the, was The Orchard. The Orchardist or Orchard? Or I think the, no, I think it was just the orchard. Okay. I don't think that one was quite as broadly received in part. I think because it didn't have a teen and a kid component, I think that there was some attempt to include those populations as well. Um, but you're right. I mean, I think that we need to pick something. And then there was another time, too, I think that there was a like three or four different ones and folks were voting on it. Mm -hmm. that, so. They voted on the Omnivore's Dilemma. There was a voting for that. I thought there were two rounds of voting. There was voting, well, whatever. The Art Forger, I think. Oh, yes, um, that's correct. Yeah. That's correct, yeah. Um, <clears throat> okay, so we've done it three times. And Cheryl uh, hardy Farachi made a beautiful sign that looks really nice up hanging outside of the Littleton Reads program. So were we to do it, when would make sense to do it, do you think? Um, not the summer because summer reading is crazy. Right. So either between now and summer reading or after summer reading. Okay. What are your thoughts on doing it sooner rather than later? The thing about that is that we have to come up with programs right. to, associated with it. Yep. And we have to figure out how we're going to pay for that too. Right. So I have to talk to the friends. Um, they have $28,000 in their account. I forgot to mention that. Okay. But that, that number just popped into my mind. <laughs> <laughs> so, and I have to figure out what book and what book. Right. So, um, honestly, it would be better after summer. Okay. Yeah. So, you, like a back to school yeah. sort of thing. Yeah. Okay. There we go. Um, summer reading generally ends like mid August. Yeah, end of August, okay. just before school starts. Right. Um, I'm happy to also uh, research. But my suspicion is you probably, are you on like a listserv of other yeah, library Yeah, direct, other libraries do it, and then yeah. they all buy the books, and then we share books, yeah. so mm -hmm. we can figure out what sure. programs they did. And Great. So, I can so we don't need to reinvent it. Yeah, we don't have to okay. reinvent the wheel. All right. Maybe um, if you have time between now and our next meeting, you can sure. maybe get a couple of ideas on what has worked in other places across all age groups. So if we want to do voting, we could you know, you could come up with a few um, selections and we can open up the voting from like April to June or May, May and June and then pick and then do it started no, in September, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay. Thank you. That'd be, that would be fun. And we're going to need that much time to actually have a chance to reserve space uh, in the Cooper room because 16 different people who wanted the Cooper Room were turned away. 28. I'm sorry, 28 people in 16 days? Over a 16-day period. Six, over a 16-day period. And I took people. out the Sundays, but it was over 16 days that the library was open, 28 groups wanted were turned space. away from space. Yeah, and that's just the ones they remember to record. There, there are times they forgot. Right. Yeah. Okay, so reserve the room now. <laughs>
Okay. Um, all right. And then the last item on new business is the potential library program, a screening of a 2017 Ooh. documentary, Ex Libris, the New York Public Library. I, um, I found this reference to this in the most, well, in a fairly recent, um, it's not episode, what did you say about a magazine? Edition? Did you say edition? Edition. Yeah. Of the Christian Science Monitor. Um, issue. Issue, that's issue. it. <laughs> and, <clears throat> and their film critic said that this was an excellent, <clears throat> an excellent documentary. Top 10 of 2017. It was the only documentary in the top 10 movies from 2017. And I did look at it online. Um, it's one of those, I mean, it's a documentary about a library. So that being the case, um, we did make it. That being the case, I think that we should um, think about uh, finding how we can get it. Okay. Can you find out how we can get it? To, so that Probably we could on show Amazon. it? Um, but I don't know. You mean buy buy it on Amazon? Yeah. If you buy something on Amazon as a library, is it a different sort of thing? Because then I buy stuff on Amazon all the time. No, I know. But if you buy something on Amazon to put in the shelf for David to take home and watch, mm -hmm. it's different than buying something to put it in the DVD to to. Show it. No, I just to a room of fifty people. No, whenever I show a movie, I just buy it first. I don't catalog it yet. I just yeah. wait till I show the movie, and then right. I catalog it, and then I put it on the shelf for other people to take out. No, she's asking about the licensing. About the sure. licensing. Oh, the licensing. Yeah. Um, yeah, sorry, that's what I meant. Um, yeah, I'll have to. There's cake. Come have cake. <laughs> it's very good. Is that called public participation? Yeah, come in. No, <laughs> come in. Our meeting is ending in about two seconds. <laughs> yes, we are. <laughs> the chairperson from the Board of Selectmen is standing in the doorway, harassing us and refusing to eat cake. Come on. There he is. <laughs> Answers. Yes, yeah, thank so you. We'll, we'll okay, so uh, can you So, that? yeah, it's, if it's not part of our license, we can usually buy a license. Okay. That's what um, other groups do. Yeah. Okay. I just have to see if I can put it. <clears throat> All right, then. So, that being the case, uh, we have gone through our agenda for the day, for the night, and mm, we're at now 33 minutes. That is going to be tough to beat next month, but we will endeavor to, to move right through. Um, and we didn't talk about it. Uh, oh, yes. Is there, is there a discussion? Is yes. yes. Um, I didn't add it. I didn't I know it was. I haven't seen the update. I haven't looked at it yet. Sorry. Yeah, there's um, one more thing. But I feel this like is, it should I be added a, a slide. This oh. I added, I, added a, I added a critical oh. concern slide, which I took some of the information inside. I kind of made it. Brought it. Okay, so and, and uh, you're right. This this was an, an old, a, a matter of old business. Mm -hmm. Uh, a month ago, there was a suggestion that we as a board come up with a PowerPoint presentation in order to update the, the, um, the town through the selectmen. And I did ask to get on the selectmen's um, agenda for the 12th. And Chuck Dacos is not sure there's going to be enough room to do that. So maybe it'll be the following. Uh, 12, 14, 20, 26th, maybe? Yeah, that's right. Okay, so, but for now, this this is the looks of it. And uh, Chris worked with, <clears throat> with Sam to gather information and to draft um, an update. So she just gave us a copy of this so that we could have a chance to give it a look. Um, and in part because it's not necessarily going to be anytime soon. Perhaps it makes sense to um, read through this and provide any feedback to Chris by email. Yeah. yeah. I kept playing with the order. I wasn't sure what order things should be in, but you guys can yeah. take a look and let me know if there's more details yeah. that you want me to add it to, uh, it's obviously it's you know it's only it's like short six slides right. but I yeah. can so I could I could break it out uh, I, I wasn't sure what yeah. if someone was going to be up there talking through it or whether it was just going to be something that was just played and people sure. watched so yeah. it kind of yeah. depends on you don't want to present it 
I mean, I'll do it if you don't want to. I'll do it if you don't right, want we to. Can, like, we can discuss. Okay. Yeah. All right. I think um, there's, yeah, I think that this is great. Thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> and we can go over the whole thing. But I'm thinking, um, and I'm thinking that um, based on what MBLC ladies have said, we should really emphasize to the public that we can redesign the whole library. Okay. And that's, right, that's part of the whole. Well, it's, that's the part still of has it. to be a library at the end. Yeah, <laughs> I know, I know. Right. But, but right. we, yeah. just so people don't get we're hung not, up. We're not stuck with what we People do do need to not get stuck on what this looks like. I can take the picture. Well, a little stuff on what it looks like. No, we can redesign the whole thing. We can get a new architect if we want. It does not have to look like this at all. And I just think that needs to be made clear in the presentation. Okay. And our architect said it most likely won't look like that. Anyway. Yeah. Okay. Huh. Yeah, the yeah. only thing that's said is the space where it's going. Yeah, it just has to, where it goes and the general square footage has to stay the same in the rooms, but everything else can change. He also said, and since you're on member of COA now, that's really, congratulations. Thank you. Um, he, when we met with them, I was like, you know, our senior population has a lot of needs in town and they, their needs need to be addressed. And he said, well, let's have, and I said, can we have, you know, seniors at the table when, and this is the design phase. And he said, mm -hmm. absolutely. Yeah. So I, I, you can share that with your community that, Great. Yeah. Yep. All right. So, yeah, so um, I'm, I actually, yeah, get anything else you guys see, um, I'm open to feedback. Okay. Okay, well, I, I had mentioned a timeline. Yes, I um, I researched that. it once when I was just interested in how far back this went, and it, it's, it started in 2011, okay? Um, that was the first time there was anything official it's actually older than that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, uh, discussion. Nine or ten. But what I mean is, what right. I mean is, the first time the money was was awarded for this project was 2011. Right. So we want to take right. it back as far okay. as. Okay. So that's, that's information in, that's, that I don't have. So that's in the okay. town reports. Okay. All right. So I went. And, I went and looked in the town reports and all. So, and if it goes back further than that, let us know. Let's get let's get that in there so that people are aware Anything of how much time. Anything you think that should be included, definitely. Yeah, I can do I can do it. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I can't do it. I make a motion that we adjourn the meeting. Or as as Mr. McKay, Charles K would say, dissolve the meeting. Dissolve the meeting. Let's dissolve. Second. Ooh, second for dissolving. All in favor. All in favor. Aye. 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 But 43 minutes. But New record. Have a good night.